Was it so bad? Yes. You left in the middle? Yeah, I left in the middle. I left in the intermission. I want to sit in the jury. You want to sit here?
So um, welcome everybody to the Martin E. Siegel Theater Center here at the Grundit Center CUNY. And this is uh, day two of um, what somehow we think might be the core of our uh, spring season. It's the Penwell Voices Festival. And we already had uh, two days. The first evening on uh, Monday, we had a session on the Gorky, uh, the work uh, of the Gorky Theater, their ideas, their vision. And um, we had Christopher, who is here with us, uh, who uh, talked about it together with um, Sivan and Nora and Dimitri, who is today not with us, but he will be back tomorrow. And we talked about what the Gorky uh, Theater is all about. Normally for Penwell Voices, we invite playwrights from all around the world, from all the continents, from Africa, Latin America, Asia, Australia, also European, Eastern European, or Russian, and to see what, is car what are current trends in writing, what is on people's mind, what should we pay attention to, what is uh, really on the horizon. This year, uh, we decided to actually feature one theater, and this is the Gorky Theater in Berlin. Um, of all the theaters in Berlin, and many say, and I would agree, it is at the moment the most shining. It's one of the four or five state theaters, uh, city theaters, next to the 20 big theaters. It's the smallest one, architecturally, very prominently placed under the Linden, close to the, uh, to the uh, opera and the Neue Galle, Neue Museum. It's a beautiful building, a classical building. And in Germany, every five, six, seven, or 10 years, there's new artistic leadership uh, coming in, and this year, and we do celebrate the leadership of uh, um, Sherman and Jens, who took it over and said, this is an ensemble where a, basically everybody on the ensemble and everybody who comes in and directs doesn't look like me, uh, like a German, and are from all around the world, refugees or first generation uh, immigrants or second generation. And, uh, and they actually developed their work in a new style. Hans T. Lehmann, when he was here last year, did say, in post-traumatic theater, he's misunderstood. It's not that he says we are beyond writing, that playwrights don't count anymore. Actually, the new ways of writing are needed. And as we heard from the discussions yesterday and from the Monday evening, the Gorky is to find a way how an ensemble uh, collaborates. And um, I would like to thank again, uh, Christoph, for coming over and everybody. So again, this is Christoph, Nora, there is um, uh, um, Sivan, Sivan, no, um, no, I said to say it right, yeah? Sivan here, so, and, um, and today's uh, play um, is um, The Making Of, and um, it is uh, directed by Sybil Campson, who is just uh, over here. Sybil, you want to say hello? And Nora wrote it, who is here, and she flew all the way in from Berlin um, just um, to be with us. So it's a very, uh, a very, very special day. And I would like to thank Antje Oegel, who collaborated with us, and Michael and Elida and everybody to make this happen. So um, if you have your cell phone, now is the time to take it out and double check it's off. And the Siegel Theater Center uh, has collaborated since 10 years with Penvold Voices. I actually wrote to them and said, you don't just need to have poets and uh, novelists and uh, short story writers also. Theater writers should be represented. They said, yes, of course. So we are very honored to be with that great organization. Penn uh, does get writers out of prison. It's a freedom to write program. It's a human rights uh, activist group also. And it gets out, gives out the most significant literary awards in the US. And this festival, which we are part of, is the most significant literary festival. It's going on all over the city right now. Go to the website. It's sensational um, what Penn put together and what Chip Rowley did. So it's a real honor for us. The Siegel Center bridges academia and professional theater, international and American theater. So this, of course, is right at the core of what we do. So um, again, um, uh, now we're going to start. And Sybil, maybe you have a few words to tell us uh, about the play and uh, how you approach it. And it will be followed by a discussion. And tonight, after the second reading, we will also have a reception in the archive bar. Thank you, Frank. Thank you, Ancha and the Siegel Center and everybody up in the booth. Woo! you for today and to Nora for being here. We had a great time today rehearsing. Um, I just wanted to say that um, some of the cultural um, references between German and English, I don't want you to be startled, but we're going to have some, um, some visual aids to help you along with that stuff and help us um, bridge the Atlantic as we go. So don't be startled when those come up. And um, we've just had today to rehearse, so it's been fast and furious, but Nora came and helped us, and it was a lot of fun. I just want to introduce the actors to you also. Um, let's see who come and tell you who they're playing. So first is Christopher Rashi Stevenson. He is going to read stage directions in several other roles. Here's Robert M. Johansson. He's going to play Mads. 
This is Oceana James. She's going to read the part of Gordon, which is a woman named Gordon. Just so, that's why I wanted to do this, so you don't get confused. Here's Eleanor Hutchins. She's going to read Gloria. And here's Rolls Andre. He's going to be the jackal. Thanks for being here, everybody. Thank you. The Making of by Nora Abdel Maksud. Act one, scene one. Beep. Advertising. Project of the century. It was meant to be the project of the century. Wild animals. Cattle, fur, women's bodies, men's bodies. I was lucky enough to play the Batman. Impressive predecessors, Christian Bale and... Uh, I've also yeah. gained self-awareness in Tantra workshops and sweat lodges, but <laughs> this was another dimension. We were a family. The girl is a kind of noble savage a goddess armed with natural instincts. An exceptional team, even the stunt department, jiu-jitsu, European champion, taekwondo, mixed martial arts, and we... <laughs> <laughs> then Dolph Lundgren. Special thanks to the <laughs> Dolph Lundgren, the Swedish he had, Ivan Drago from Rocky IV. Dolph Lundgren came on board as producer. That was pretty hard to swallow. That's a problem in Germany. Commerce is always presumed to be anti-art. And the money, I mean, three million euros? Just saying. Six million for the special effects. In Germany, that's almost... I was working uh, for a special rate. Who else dares to take on a superhero adaptation? A driver, swanky hotel, all flights, premium class. I come from performance art, where you'll be waiting a long time for eight million euros. <laughs> I slept in my caravan. It was a good, hard mattress, good for the back. And Gordon. Gordon! She works without compromise, a visionary. She's she this restored my faith in German cinema. Absolutely exceptional actors. I'd say it's a highly talented cast. I had some intensive coaching with Frank. Uh, with the jackal <laughs> leading the way. <laughs> what an instinctive actor. You won't find it in any school. You can't learn something like that. The coaching wasn't exactly cheap, but anything for art. Just He's art just it. there, feeling. Action, reaction, unbelievably powerful. <laughs> Awards? I'll happily take them. <laughs> Work, too. Joke, actually. Uh, the I Batman Rises! <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> Scene two, Gordon. My name is Gordon. I'm a director. Ever since I saw Beauty and the Beast as a girl with my cousin Martina, I loved films and men with highly developed back hair. And I love money. With it, you can buy yourself a better life, better food, kitten heels, it gains you recognition and respect, whereas money you don't have leads you into servitude. Believe me, I know what I'm talking about. So, what do I do? I dedicate my time, talent, work to the one thing that combines money and cinematic art, German mainstream. <laughs> I had my first contact with the Batman in the Batman the movie. As you know, we women don't have it easy. Last year, the broadcasting institutions didn't support a single woman in the high budget sector. I can sense your gender neutral haircuts getting messed up from sheer head shaking with my TV license fee. I saw the I afternoon showing for two and a half Deutschmarks. But whoever said that artistic talent is equally distributed over gender, skin color, and class? Now I'm here. 
Warner Brothers Movie World at Bolt Truck Care Column. The market answers these questions with facts. The most successful films were made by white men that starred white men. My father's very proud, too. But I was lucky. After a decade of acquisitions, a rash from crawling up the asses of producers at Berlin Film Festival receptions and countless undignified side jobs, Dolph came on board as producer. This film was my chance to prove myself. On the evidence, my one, only one. As an actor, greatest challenge of my life. You put that nicely. Thank you. <laughs> Off you go. Scene three, Gloria. There's no formula for a successful film. By success, I mean money. Not praise at prestigious festivals or good news, but dosh. I'm talking about a box office hit. But the industry has certain conventions. Rule one, name recognition. Well-known faces are considered a promise of quality. I found Gloria at a feminist performance festival in Malmo. Flashback, feminist <laughs> performance festival in Malmo. Pussy juice power! <laughs> she pulls a bloody tampon out of her vagina. And flashback feminist performance festival in Malmo. She was a child star. At the age of nine, she won the Palm d'Or for Pink is a Moist Color, a captivating film about the love between two erotically gifted girls. The critics raved about it. Of course, I wasn't about it wasn't about the explicit teenager lesbian scenes. Gloria then distanced herself from the director. Flashback Malmo restaurant. Gloria is drinking a mango daiquiri. I distanced myself from the director. Went underground at first. Now she does. I do feminist performance. The film industry is still a patriarchal capitalist machine. Great show. On stage. Gordon swallows something up. <clears throat> On stage. Gordon swallows something up. <laughs> On stage, I am the curator of myself in relation to the eyes looking at me. And your hair is blonde now. <laughs> Jackpot. I dream of one day. Dream casting. Not sick, not fat, not over 30, <laughs> not frigid, and a hairless child's body. Here in Sweden. Why are you crying? I'm so happy. She takes her hand. Thank you. Have you read the play? The script? Many times. Oh, what do you think of it? Uh, I thought it was pretty crappy. Mm. Why is the woman called the girl? The girl represents a feminine elemental force. I didn't want to personalize. Why does she get licked out by a jackal? The, he doesn't lick her out. He frees her from the alienated working conditions. Oh. The girl comes from the servant proletariat. She's a chambermaid for Boris Wagner. She had a hard childhood, lots of getting raped, crying, and I'm still not enjoying it. We'll show it like um, on Game of Thrones. Gently and aestheticized flashback. Then along comes the jackal, an animal, a, a postmodern libertine. And he liberates her. Why does she have to be liberated? Now I have her. Race, class, gender. Gloria, race, class, gender. Nolan Bateman was a white, heterosexual, cis man, a privileged, multi-billionaire vigilante. Do you feel represented by that? No. 
We need new perspectives. Your feminist peep show was sublime. Oh, at the moment, I'm trying to de-eroticize my body. All this being shiny and smelling good is masochistic. The Batman Rises isn't about erotic capitalism. It's about a woman's pleasure. In the Western tradition of thought, female sexuality is still reactive. Women may be satisfied, but may not admit to their own desire. What heterosexual man wants to see a beautiful blonde woman standing by her desire? None. Who demands her pleasure? None. Who masturbates vigorously? Who has animalistic sex and comes noisily? None! No one wants to see that! In this film, they'll be shagging like there's no tomorrow. Shaman style shagging, shagging for female power. The jackal doesn't actually mount her. He bows down as he lifts. I'm in. End flashback, Malmo restaurant. It was that simple. Race, class, gender opens the heart of every performance artist. Scene four, <laughs> reading rehearsal, showdown. Hmm. As you can imagine, feminism is a box office poison. Ugly, complaining female academics. All that howling about eating disorders. This morning, you ran out of a tweet. Is the patriarchy to blame? Are you with me? That doesn't earn you any money. But there is a form of emancipation that the market welcomes with its open arms. Beyonce, for example, Hannah Montana, that slut with the thumb. Queens of feminism, a nymphette with firm breasts who gets fucked by a predatory animal and has a similar potential. A big like uh, King Kong, only more forceful. I can see you shaking your undercuts again. It reeks of old man fantasy. But the cultural history of the West, except for David Bowie and the New York Dolls, can be seen as a collective project for the manufacture of masculinity. Our geniuses are men, our generals and dictators, our poets and thinkers are men, were men. Who do you think produces my films? Who occupies 86% of executive positions in the film industry? Power is a male resource, so is money. Why in God's name shouldn't I use them? Flashback, reading rehearsal. Hello, Gordon. Mads, how wonderful, I'm so pleased. I'm fully in character. I already know the whole script by heart. Our lovely warrior, introduce yourselves. Gloria with mango daiquiris. Gloria, hello. Can I touch your hair? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> lovely and blonde. I had it dyed because of Ingrid Bergman. The introduction goes on. Before we start filming, we all meet for the read-through. This day is crucial for team building. The director needs to have sure instincts. I usually tell a joke to relax the mood a bit. So, the director asks the female actor, shall we start filming right away? Or do you want something else to eat? To which she replies, it doesn't matter as long as I get something warm in my belly. <laughs> Sperm? <laughs> Very nervous. Uh, which scene are we doing? The showdown. Jackie! The jackal enters and is introduced to the colleagues. Everyone is visibly tense. Team Jackie. Jackie, team. We'll start with the showdown. The jackal sends something. Everybody is scared. It, it, that's okay. He's caught a scent. And sit. <laughs> Action! Whatever it is, it's nuclear. How long till it expires? 35 seconds. Oh! Ah. Steady on! Maybe he's hungry. That was his line. 
Easy now, mate. Competition. Gordon likes it. Those are pure instincts. Don't worry. Everything's going to be okay. Gloria sits down on Mad's knees. This is an extremely intense encounter for me. He has to get used to it. Do you think I, I should give him... A treat, yes. Uh, do I... Do I... Throw it, or do I give it to him like that? In the palm of your hand, no sudden movement, nice and slow. Like, the, like that? Flowing movement, exuding calm. Gloria feeds the jackal a treat. Again. Gordon goes to the front right. I watch from here. Action. Whatever it is, it's nuclear. <laughs> How long till it explodes? Oh! <laughs> End flashback reading rehearsal. When you make a film, the first week's box office results determine your success. The second rule of marketing is pre-awareness. <coughs> Films that people talk about sell. The guy in the audience doesn't have to love the film, just talk about it. In the Reverend DiCaprio fights with an animated bear. He jostles with a bunch of pixels and, and gets an Oscar for it. Our jackal is real. Jostling is the most G-rated euphemism for what he gets up to with Gloria. And people say that European cinema doesn't cross boundaries anymore. Scene five, jackal. It was the first time I'd worked with a jackal. Gloria with mango daiquiri. You can domesticate it, but to really... An archetype of wild... An archetype of wild elemental masculinity. We never knew if it was going to attack us. The jackal was kind of afraid of me. It wasn't easy. And the stunt but a guy after, would... after he led his performance, it was clear we had to think outside the box. The off the off You can't communicate with him. You just get this paw coming at you. Scene six, feminine directing. Love scene. In the back, the flashback, love scene. Mads and Gloria, he is carrying her. I love working with men. You can just sense the presence of penis. <laughs> Actors have to move. They need exchange on a physical level. <laughs> but then women find it easier to get in touch with their emotions. They aren't punished for crying. They're afraid. To Gloria, who is in Mad's arms. Fair, nice, admit it. Here, too, the exceptions confirm the rule. There are actresses who can manage to cry without a menthol lip balm. But they can cry at night when they call people up drunk, begging for recognition, or in the hospital when emotion breaks new ground somatically. Believe me, bladder infections are a woman's uncried tears. <laughs> that was really great. Oh, and me? You're too very touching, very uh, intimate. Do you want me to increase the sense of threat? Don't change anything. I don't think I've ever seen you so gentle. Takes his hands. We've seen it all. Okay. Gordon kisses both on forehead. Group hug. Group hug. <laughs> when I direct, I'm a real mother. The film is my baby. The set is an ovum which we have to feel safe. Mads takes an apple crumble from catering. Gloria takes a heap of it. A safe place. I provide my team with love, coziness, and apple fritters. Mm. Mads loves them. Delicious. <laughs> Mahatma! Yes? We're getting ready to shoot. We women have to relearn how to embrace our femininity, especially in positions of leadership. We're 
We're taking it from the top with love scene in the acid bath. Two, one in the second. Quiet, please. We're rolling. Come on. Sound. Set. Camera. Rolling. Marker. And action. You've been messing with the wrong people. <laughs> Sorry, but Bottrop needs you, Batman. What if he doesn't exist anymore? I need. Case. Cut! <laughs> Thank you, sweeties. Oh. Gordon oh. came crying on her knees. Can oh. someone call a doctor, please? Stay with us! We need a doctor! Can you take over for a bit? Yeah, yeah, I can. <laughs> I have my period. Okay, from the top. Love scene in the acid bath, two, one, and the third. Prop department needs to pipe down back there. We need to concentrate. Wonder like we did in the rehearsal. We're sitting on crap. <laughs> we'll leave that to the audience. <laughs> Give us some damn pace. Sound? Rolling. And flashback love scene. Scene seven, Mads. Mads was very much while we were preparing to shoot, he built up another 37 kilos of muscle mass. When an actor has the honor to play a character as iconic as the Batman, he needs courage, a willingness to take risks, and the ability to concentrate on what is essential. Acting is a feminine profession. Who is mad? Women do what comes naturally to them, putting on makeup, getting dressed up, moments of sexuality, and talking a lot. No touchy feeling. None of that makeup. I never got to know him. Men have it harder. He stayed in character for seven months. <laughs> I use the method. Only the method can make men's work visible. I lived among bats for eight months. <laughs> I did all my stunts myself. That's why they earn more, too. My first vertebra was broken. Oh. I'll take it easy now. <laughs> we know how important work is for the constitution of the male self. The bat suit weighs more than a bat suit has ever weighed before. <laughs> Even more than Christian Bale's. <laughs> he was the Batman. The boys. It was eerie. The boys. It's like riding a bike. First I had to train it. But now it just happens. <laughs> then the showdown. <laughs> Scene eight, showdown. <laughs> That's how I decided. The stunt double said he was going to fly up to the Boeing in the unit helicopter so he could abseil down. I was tied to a seven meter truck about to do a stunt. I turned around and said, no way. On the wing of nose diving Boeing 737, that view over Bottrop Kirchhallen. <laughs> Fight scene with a real jackal. I want to experience that myself, buddy. In the showdown, the Batman finally experiences the majestic redeployment of his masculinity. Voice <laughs> machine breaks. <laughs> of his masculinity? <laughs> Holy shit. I think the voice machine's broken. The battery ran out. I don't understand. I pressed it here. I told you it was a cheap piece of junk. His vocal cords are worn out. <laughs> Bloody thing. Clear your throat. <laughs> oh, <laughs> fits the voice machine. I think the battery's run out. Mads is preparing for a historical buddy movie with Peter Dinklage. No, I'm not. <laughs> By Zazian 9th century, he's uh, the son of a fallen emperor. The officers of the heir of the throne emasculate. Well, what's that? Snip, snip. Since then, he's been sounding uh, me. He plays a castrato. I'm not a castrato. <laughs> because of the method. <laughs> the voice method. Really impressive. I'm not a castrato. Shut up. The camera's rolling. I won't. I'm not a castrato. <laughs> You've been calling me that on set for six months. I don't want the voice machine. It pinches. The plaster of the cable pulls my hairs out. You signed a contract saying you do the making of with the voice machine. Fuck it. <laughs> I don't ever want that thing pointing at my face again. We're promoting my film here, and I don't 
don't want a castrato in my program. I'm not a castrato. <laughs> this is my voice. That's the truth. In the making of, I can blather on as much as I want to. Now you can kiss my ass or I'm off. Turn the camera off. Now! Black. Gloria takes a mango daiquiri. Gordon tries to get the situation under control. Gloria fondles the jackal. He wants to touch her hand. Second act, bright hair. Scene one, the Batman rises. <laughs> what is pop? What is film? What is fiction? The bat. Mess, which penetrate people's everyday life. Gloria with mango daiquiri. Strong women frighten men. The Batman come, <laughs> comes out. The girl is a strong female character. She works as home help for Boris Wagner, the Batman. At the beginning. She uh, loves him, but she senses that something isn't right. He's not being straight with her. The Batman's having an existential crisis. <laughs> the sexes are in crisis. Look around you. Men are insecure, women are overwhelmed. The world thinks he's evil because he's taken original guilt upon himself. He's sad, drinks too much, he has suicidal thoughts. Personally, I find that so crap, too. I mean, honestly, he still pays her like shit. The gender pay gap. <laughs> she sacrifices her desire to have children for her to her career, only to fail at the glass ceiling. He loves her in spite of her university education, but his willy ends up not in her, but in a sexual continual reflection loop again. 30-something educated couples. May I touch your nipple, Beta? I mean, why? Then the jackal comes to Bartrop City. <laughs> because allocated roles are what make passion possible. Because the beast falls in love with beauty and not with his hairy classmate. All the others see a monster in the jackal, but his only crime is to be wild and untamed. Jackal organizes an anarchic underground army that brings about chaos in the city. Sexually, too. <laughs> <laughs> there is an inner history of masculinity. It's buried under the dust of 40 years of Emma magazine and overgrown with armpit hair. The girl joins them. She's naked, but politically naked. Oh! <laughs> she frees herself by going back to nature, like Antichrist. Women, nature. Man and woman, Mars and Venus, two polar. During the shoot, I sometimes had these intellectual moments. When the girl leaves the Batman, he goes into exile. I <laughs> mean, really, Batman. We women have a strong inner essence. All we're lacking is power, structurally speaking. To Barbaristan. The white man among the barbarians teaches him to find his way back to his inner core by doing a hell of a lot of pull-ups. The girl sacrifices herself to him for the revolution, like Lysistrata, only in reverse. Mainstream film is a factor in social order. Then the jackal turns out to be a beast, a rapist, murderer, and terrorist. If the buying public is confused, it creates orientation. The balance of Western civilization is at stake, and the fat man has to reestablish it. But let's be honest. Boris Vanda, who can live up to him? I can. No. Yes, I can. Not with that voice, my friend. Gordon takes off the mask and the muscle costume off the Batman. What are you doing now? Uh, people, you're on. It's time for the Gloria Tickles Jackal interview with advertising gimmick. It's here in my script. Gordon puts him on position. You wanted the truth, you're getting it. Mads wasn't a typecast, as I mischievously claim. What comes next? Flashback casting. Holy shit, that's not in my script. Scene two, casting. Lights! Flashback casting. Pleased to meet you. Are you ready? We'll start off with the showdown. The jackal, the girl, and you are on the wing of a Boeing 737 approaching bar drop. You have 35 seconds till the bomb explodes. Yes, I, I, I've read it. Good. A fight to the death. Action! Whatever it is, it's nuclear. Thank you. 
lowers her own voice, like giving him lessons. <coughs> Should I do it with more urgency, or? Uh, thank you. Uh, more urgency. Breathe in from here. Voice lesson. Mads does it too. She tries to lower her voice. There's the fear. I'm not afraid. Nice and relaxed. Action. Whatever it is, smoothly. Thank uh, you. My diaphragm is still a little tense. It, it was very good. Let's try another variation. The Batman has got injured while fighting with the Jack. On his voice box. Can you imagine how that feels? Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Ah. Oh. Oh. Action. Whatever it is, it's nuclear. Thank you. <laughs> Should I take my voice a little higher? No, not higher. What is it then? Your voice is too high. You're the back. I'll say the line in a lower voice, no problem. Say it in a lower voice. Whatever it is, it's nuclear. <laughs> that is in a lower! My dad said it fits well because bats communicate via sonar. <laughs> Whatever it is, it's nuclear. You've got the role. Amazing. Where's the director? I'm the director, the female director. Oh, oh okay. Thank you. Uh, ciao. <laughs> Scene three, Gloria Jackal, volume one. Gloria plays sensually with the jackal as a Batman advertisement gimmick. We'd never have been able to afford you. Dolph has lots of experience in the action film business. A different level of expertise. He comes from Sweden, which I think is cool. Mad's mom did the script uh, continuity on Universal Soldier. That's where she met Dolph. Nine months later, along came Little Mads. Wasn't easy for him. Michael Jackson's daughter has a few tattoos now. Johnny Depp's, she's anorexic. But he put on a good show. As for questions of detail, both physical and vocal, we reached into our bag of tricks. In the opera, the most demanding voice is the tenor. My dad said in film, people reach into their bag of tricks. So we did, vocally and physically. Scene four, fitting, flashback fitting. Rule three, body lift. Stand right here, please. Gordon looks at Gloria's body. Simone, this is Gloria. Oh, blonde. Yes, I was in Malmo. Are <laughs> our bodies replacing religion? Are they a momentum of stability, a physical declaration of control in imponderable time? Show your hand. Or are we decadent sons of bitches with the time and money to incessantly circle around ourselves? Looking at Gloria's butt. Sociology holds answers to the questions of our time, but I don't give a shit about sociology. Touching thigh gap. Congrats. Fact is, illusory bodies have a market value. Nice and firm. An actor's body needs to be evaluated before shooting starts. We're marketing a premium product, after all. Symmetrical face, straight nose, pert breasts. In women your age, breasts are often, often start looking like a floppy dog's ears. Don't you ever wear a bra? Never. Gordon makes a gesture of happiness, looks into Gloria's panties, anxious. Simone! Hair! We'll have to see that. We'll have to shave you, love. Why? You're so your skin can breathe better. I had to shave for pink is a moist color, too. I don't like being forced to shave, Gordon. Sometime, a little lie helps. We're wondering whether the girl should get a no. Why do I have to shave? Your whole body. Triangle or runway? Brazilian. With no man's land or without? With. Deal. Go to Simone, she'll make a cast for the nose. Remember the hashtag outcry over Michael, Faye, Bender's, Willie, and shame? 
Male nudity is provocative and brave. A willy wants to act, to dominate and rule and not to stay within its object status. Women, on the other hand, can be naked but not ugly. The bravest thing that an actress can do is therefore the nude. Don't get me wrong, nobody would cast a dog. <laughs> Look at that woman. Do you want to see a predator licking her out? You take a model and stick on a nose on her. Charlize Theron in Monster got the nose. Nicole Kidman in The Hours, too. Sticking a nose on means bringing the Oscar into view. Look at that nose. Of course she didn't get a nose. Look at you, all flirty and expressive. For that, you need a minimum of class. Mads is jogging on stage. Keep your composure, be sensitive. Well, what is that? A necklace for my dad when I sent him the second part of the pendant. So cute, I'm how, just a bicep. how big. 30 centimeters. Respect. Box office poison. 32 if I tense it. I've been doing craft maga with the stunt coordinator. Do you know what your duty is with this film? To tell stories. But even more than that, we create icons, like your dad. Heroic tales are indispensable for the people out there. Do you understand? I'm not stupid. Did your dad take care of you? When I turned 18, he gave me 600 Swedish kroners for my driver's license. You were lucky. Little boys need role models, especially fat, unhappy little boys with absent fathers. You're their idol. Your body allows them a boundless, ongoing dispute with their own southern nonsense. I met Dustin, Ricardo, air your room, stop wagging, and take back control. Terrific. So, now. Let's take this and convert it into perfection. How tall? One meter seventy-six. We can cheat with height. One meter seventy-six. Maria! Maria does costume. Simone does makeup. Hi, 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 hi. They have a contagious disease, so they stay off stage. <laughs> now, no one's ever gone out of here unhappy. They all say wow on the first day of shooting. Shoulders must be wider. Okay. We need more of a V in the waist. No V. Pectoralis, you'll get a hero's chest. And flashback, fitting. As long as you treat your actors with love and respect, they can keep it. My dad played Ivan Drago. It's not always easy to compete with Ivan Drago, but I prepared for the shoot conscientiously. I worked with a stunt coach in Berlin. But compared to him, I sometimes didn't get enough respect in pre-production. What are you doing? Time for my perspective. No. Yes, it is. Flashback fitting, mad perspective. Uh, teeth. Mad shows teeth. He's got brown bits in the cracks. That's for my sandwich. Tooth out of position. We will adjust it. She became really abusive. Ugh, fucking adjust it. Now he's cast as Jurgen Vogel. We can't sort everything out in post-production. I wanted an actor with everything, okay? Mouth wide. It simply wasn't professional. The producers decide on him, so they can pay now, too. Gloria is 1 meter 80, and they still sell us this Castro dwarf. I'm not Castro or Castrata. No, you're the damn Batman. Do you think that a bit of Krav Maga was and low-fat yogurt is enough? And flashback fitting man's perspective. <laughs> scene five, love scene. After the fitting came, the love scene in the acid bath. We've already shown that. Not what really happened. We're going to do the flashback to love scene in the acid bath, how it really was. What? No. Gloria, come with me. But I'm not on again until the licking out interview. You're on now if I say you are. That's how gruff I was being. Flashback, love scene, <laughs> Mads' perspective. Gloria jumps into Mads' arms. Bottrop needs the Batman. What if he doesn't exist anymore? I mean. Yes. Cut! You're shaking. My upper arms are burning already. Shall I give you a quick massage? There's acid all over the floor. If you drop her, she'll die. Couldn't I give her a piggyback? 
No, you wimp. The Batman bears his pain stoically. But there's a tingling in my biceps. I can't do it. And flashback love scene, Matt's perspective. He didn't say it like that. Yes, I did. No, he didn't. Flashback love scene back to Gordon's perspective. <laughs> but there's a tingling in my biceps. It'd be easier if you weren't such a beach whale. You understood me, you lard ass, that fat neck. She's sweating all over my costume. Can we continue? Why does she put so much bread on her butter? I just burned fat <laughs> very quickly. Shut up. I'll reduce your rate. My dad pays for the catering. You always take two apple fritters, too. Since May, I've been on low carbs and crop baga for my biceps, and she eats like a horse. It's not fair. She's sweating all over my costume. And flashback love scene. <laughs> Gordon and Mads look into each other's eyes, realize they're being filmed, look into the camera. That's not going into making up. Gesture cut from Gordon and Mads. Turn the camera off! Lick. Scene six. Licking. Ecstasy. Such a thing has never before been seen on German screens. It could be said the licking out scene is provocative. Gloria drunk with mango daiquiri almost empty. Fucking cunts court anything for a mark. <laughs> the licking out scene was intended as a provocation. We all agreed on that. That's why we could go so far. The girl is actively looking for the object of her desire. She's in full effect, a kind of shamanic. Shamanic. Let me finish speaking. <laughs> shamanic witch. <laughs> Un. Leash. The problem with emancipation is that people aren't allowed to say what they want to. That even autonomous women still dream of dominant men. I was it's like I was running wild! A game of potency, domination, and control, and nature's holiest wonder. I think I tried it with a cup at first. <laughs> the bologna sausage. I thought it was important that people see in Jackie something other than a hairy warrior. The meatloaf, then mortadella, that Italian sausage with the face. It, it, was, a, it, it was like a, a kind of disillusion of boundary. I had to give myself to the animal. Fairly radical. It, it was a game with intensity. In the end, it was liver sausage. It began head to head. Who pays for all the sausage? Who does? Make makeup considered a vaginal prosthesis. Dad pays for the sausage. But that would have falsified the moment. The male jackal doesn't eat until the female is full. <laughs> <laughs> Whether it's art, let's just all smear ourselves in liver sausage. Ecstasy. <laughs> would I like to trade places with the jackal? Yes, I would. I demanded an open set. I wanted everyone to stay in the room to expose themselves to its situation. The loss of control was rewarding, pure. It, it made sense that we all had to be naked on the set, supporting our colleague. <laughs> My pleasure. Our colleague, the Batman, coming on his day off to support us. <laughs> I thought that was impressive. <laughs> I can't help thinking about it whenever I see liver sausage. And you question your own sexual life at a time like that. All smeared in liver sausage. Our bodies were covered in liver sausage. <laughs> it was the most political scene of the whole Scene seven, Gloria Jackal, volume two. Gloria! Gloria fully drunk. Shackles. Jackals. <laughs> Shackles are actually very timid animals. If you need pull. Now he's excited and stinker. Are you sick? It's a disease. Malthus smellus. We had a little period of settling in together. That's when I learned from the animal trainer that it's important to clarify the ranking order. 
doesn't, if he doesn't listen to you, you grab him by the neck and signal that you are stronger. Grabs him on the neck. Give me your paw. His paw. You did that nicely, wanna treat? <laughs> he enjoyed that scene so much, he's getting boisterous. Now, I can't imagine a better acting partner. An animal forces you to remain authentic. If you shoot a love scene with a jackal, then that's reality. You don't have to act at all. You're a wild animal. He didn't read the script. I did. Where's the syntax? They say all the best actors are dyslexic, so as for jackals... I'm not a jackal. They understand everything we say. You understand everything we say. I wanted to talk to her about Bordeaux. She said she preferred white wine. Oh, oh at first I had to get used to his smell. Just like I had to get used to hers. From the second week of shooting, we called her Don Promillo. I tried to just breathe through my mouth. Did we wash you properly? Wash? Did you nip me again? Yes. Are you nibbling my finger? She's just pretending she can't hear me. He's still an unpredictable animal. Feminazi. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't you want to go to Sweden? Gordon? <laughs> He's talking again. She rubbed a treat in my face. Shut up! What are you doing? I'm chilling my face. This guy just marked his territory. I, I couldn't stay inside. What's going on in here? He's, He's talking again. In the middle of the tape? Shut, Shut up. up! Now let's clarify the imbalance of power here. In truth, during the licking out scene, there were complications between the actress and the director. No, there weren't. <laughs> yes, there were. Get ready. Here comes a licking out scene flashback. Oh, it's my favorite scene. <laughs> the flashbacks are in my contract. I have to sort it out with my agent first. Jackal gives her a mango jackery. Okay. <laughs> Fallacy is color. Truth is light. Scene eight, licking, truth, flashback. Licking out scene. Light. Gordon with headphones and a salmon bread roll looks into the watchman. Next to her, Mads from the yard, grunting and licking. Gloria and Jackal. If she does that again, I'll send her packing. Can you give me softer lighting on No Man's Land and bring me the 650 up? Uh, a bit higher. Can we clean that up a bit again? Yes. I thought this was a closed set. You want good lighting, don't you? Set! And action! Gloria moaning from the back. Uh, more virgin, more war! He's sniffing. Don't take so long to get down to it. Just lick. No teasing. Not, not so... Uh, with your tongue. Touching mats. More intensely. Such a thing has never been seen before on German screen. They always yelled like that with me, too. <laughs> What's she doing? Cut! She's snoring. Comes on stage. I think she fell asleep. Gloria! Gloria comes on stage drunk. Mia culpa, boss. <laughs> I wasn't with you for a second there, but Jackie was doing a great job. <laughs> It'll be a radically sensual film. We have a huge problem here. That's a refusal to work. Get Dolph on the phone. Phone comes out of the ceiling. Hey, Dolph, we're shooting the sex scene with the jackal and the actress isn't available. Physically unavailable. We need someone who is available. Of course, naked. Yes, a real jackal. We have liver sausage. There must be someone in Bartrop who let herself be licked out by a jackal for money. <laughs> then in the vicinity, 
Gordon punches Gloria's head. She fades again. <sighs> tell him, tell them, it's a feminist film. I'll wait. Gordon makes her decision. She takes off her pants and moves toward the set. You, stay here. To the jackal. Do you want to warm up a bit before we... And flashback looking out scene. Second act, dark half, scene nine, jackal. The jackal reached its zenith of, the, of its career in the 70s. I'm not a jackal. Jackals were very much in demand back then. The jackal, Carlos the jackal, Conan the jackal. Then the Muslims came along. Consensual, I ask you. Look at him. Lust has made it grow. Smiles erotically at the jackal. I think Gordon wanted to give him a chance to reposition himself. Jackals are naturally promiscuous. I'm married. They stumble through a world of flesh and orifices as evolution requires them to distribute their seed. Jackal is Jackal, and the Batman is the Batman. We'd endangered the body doubles life. The Jackal is a shrewd predator on and off camera. After Mads' functional impaired biceps performance in the love scene, he offered to train him. Really, Gordon? Really, Terub. Fallacy is colored. Truth is... Scene 10, biceps training. Flashback, biceps training. Mads and Jackal are training their biceps. Mads is out of breath. Asthma. As you tense. I'm a bit out of shape. It's already burning a bit. You have to keep your hands parallel for the biceps. Otherwise, you'll be jittery at first. You end up weaker and hurting yourself. It's the same with me. Look here. That's not nothing, is it? How big are yours? 36. Yeah, mine are 32. Do you, do you have veins? Three. Oh, I've got two. <laughs> That's meatloaf. <clears throat> That's Axel. A new one's coming here. I'll have to think of what to call it. I, I almost have three, too. Oh, my arms are too fucked. My dad has six. Do you work out together? He gave me a fitness manual, Stockholm Body Fever. On Christmas Eve, I always get signed boxes of his DVDs. Does he come out and visit you sometimes? It's too expensive to come from Stockholm. He has to scrape the money together. Are we doing another set? You don't have to prove anything to him. I'm more of a character actor anyway. <laughs> like old Sheen, Brando, Pacino. Your father, Stallone, Van Damme, they were caricatures. Copies without an original. In the 40s, the Batman hunted Nazis. In the Cold War, it was extraterrestrials. In the postmodern era, he suddenly became a reflective loner. Heroes are children of their time. How are you on 18th century literature? Not so good. Do you know what made the 18th century heroes great? No. Their sensitivity. When Goethe wrote Werther, he said, you have to play out your soul's troubles. I know Goethe. Homer's heroes, Agamemnon, Achilles, were men who cried. Don't let anyone tell you their admissible and inadmissible feelings. When you act, you have to be fully inside yourself, not fully outside yourself. Let's rehearse the showdown. You're Rocky, I'm Ivan Drago. I'm the Batman. You're the Batman. Yeah. I'm the Jackal. Hit me! Mads hits Jackal. Doesn't hurt. Again! Mads hits Jackal. Again! What would your dad do now? What would he do? Hit! Jackal hits Mads heavily. Mads goes on his knees. No bruising! Jackal gives him a bruise. <laughs> buy, buy you a starring role. You are the future, my friend. And flashback, bicep strain. <laughs> scene 11, privileges, knife scene. The Jackal looked good at bicep strain. He performed very offensively. My chances were clearly slim. But let's say after the scene is before the scene. I concentrated on the showdown. I wanted to find suitable conflict, situ uh, suitable conflict situations. My dad always said, no matter what happens, you hit back. He broke his first vertebra. Maybe we should explain to people watching the making of what went before. The love scene in the acid bath. Before that. I don't know what you mean. The first day of shooting. No. The knife scene. Oh. 
Not the knife scene. Flashback knife scene. Shall we quickly go through our lines? <clears throat> if you need to. What do you want? Do you have to go through your lines? I don't think he needs to. Then we'll rehearse it from the top. All right, I don't, I don't need to either. Action. What do you want? Cut. We can't see you. Go to your mark. And action. What do you want? <laughs> Where are you? I'm here. Again, <laughs> from the top. He doesn't bite. Are you sure? Come to your mark. And action. Again from the top? Yes. And action. <laughs> what do you want? <laughs> What's that? The Kinski screw. Are you afraid? No. Find your mark. Say your line. Can we manage of course, that? Of course, of course. Is it really that hard in here? What do you want? Wait what? for me. Oh. Action. The truth. You gave them a false idol, Batman. I gave them what they needed. Sometimes the truth isn't enough. The truth is a knife that slides gently between the bones, Batman. It cuts away. Wait. I've finished the rotation. Cut. <laughs> Don't turn. We can't see you. Is it OK if I just say something? What is the scene about? What does his character want? He doesn't want to take the mask There is off. no he doesn't want. Express action, not reaction. Is he defending himself? Yes. yes. He's defending his secret, right? He's protecting his true identity. Then play it like that. What do you want? Defend yourself. <laughs> I want to take something away from you. What do you want? <laughs> I want your life. More lines. I want your role, because my dad doesn't pay for me. I'm not an heir to billions like Boris Wagner. I don't know how I'm supposed to act if, if he is... Stay the... in it, mate! The Batman isn't a narcissistic castrato. I'm not a castrato! The film isn't called Teeny Bopper Destroys the World. It's not like a baby girl. It's not your money and technique. You gave them a false idol, Batman. A chimera. <laughs> Sometimes the truth isn't enough. The truth is a knife that glides gently between the bones. It cuts very deep. Cut! We have a scene. Let's get ready to shoot. Very moving. We should do the first close-up on me, so my colleague has time to find a subtext for himself. <laughs> Good suggestion. <laughs> Gordon, can I speak to you quickly? <laughs> Tell your muscles to stop staring at me. <laughs> Imagine Gordon go off. The jackal is waiting. He's scared for your return. Maz just asked me to call the dove. Was that your latest, your last feature film? Jackal Among Jackals? That Polish, let's say, a chore film. Check. When was that? 87. Late bloomer careers like Christoph Waltz's are the exception, not the rule. I'm very proud to be a part of this project. Don't get me wrong. We think you're brilliant. Your performance is a spectacle of nature. I went to the Royal Academy of Dramatic Art. Our I... problem is of a, a moral nature. How am I, as a white, privileged woman, to translate the concerns of a subordinate jackal? I don't know. We didn't cast someone who did his research. We wanted someone whose biography made him an expert. Why did Tom Hardy play Bane? Because he was a heap of shit before coming an actor, addicted to crack and a criminal, and our jackal- I'm not a jackal. Is not a man. We must emphasize this difference. Maz, Dolphin, I want you to be free in your interpretation. We want your acting to be the spark of truth that ignites every scene in this film. You want me to howl? If that's the authentic expression of your jackal, then yes. No more lines? If that's the way you want it. Mahatma, I need a map. I've lost myself in his eyes. Let's get ready to shoot. 
and flashback night scene. Can the jackal speak? <coughs> yes. Did he learn his craft at an elite school? Okay. Has diversity become a sales concept? Guilty. Rule four, identity creates market. His job is to embody it as best he can. Ours is to market it as best we can. Of course he'd like to speak, but what is it, my friend, the cook says? If you can't stand the heat, don't enter the kitchen. I don't know any cooks. Scene 12, showdown one, flashback, showdown. Whatever it is, it's nuclear. <laughs> How long till it explodes? 35 seconds. Do you hear that? He's coming. Get the president <coughs> on the phone. Let's leave the civilities aside, Batman. You're Boris Wagner, heir to an empire, the Prince of Botrop. You'd have to travel miles to find someone who doesn't know your name. Don't come here and tell me how angry you are. Anger is our privilege, albeit our only one. I am not the true evil. I am the necessary other. Bam! Gloria throws a used tampon at the jackal. Correct! <laughs> This intervention goes out to all the bitches with imperfect bodies and extra special pussy juice power to my sister and spirit lady MC, MC whore! I want her off the set! <laughs> sorry, Jackie. Don't say sorry. Think for a change. Are you a professional or not? Am I walking around here? Jackal? Uh, around him destroying your scene? No, bro. Then why the hell did you throw tampons at me? I thought I'd let a little alpha pussy hang out a little bit. Good for you. I hope it was good because the take is useless now. Can you say something to her? This is the third time. I'm sorry, Jackie. Stay away from the set. Use it. The rage. The pain. Let's shoot it. I suggest it. I think the lines would, would maybe give it more depth. It was sensational. Do it again. With my lines? Just as it was, as if they're being squeezed out. The rage wants to get out, but it's being held back. We're rolling. Let's leave the civilities. And action. Let's leave the civilities out of it, Batman. Fill the line with rage, not the other way around. Let's leave the civilities aside, Batman. Take your time. <laughs> Now, imagine that it's a foreign language to you, the line. You only understand sing song, Cyrillic. Leslie! Fantastic! Yes, yes! Sing song! Leslie! Good! More singing! Louder! Show your pain! A song from your childhood! Sing your pain! Oh! <laughs> Scene 13, Gorilla Gloria. In the first week of shooting, Gloria was a sensation. Her girl was a kind of pre-sexual being. Her acting oscillated between abstraction and liberation. Then she began to drink and went through a wayward phase. Flashback night scene. You gave them a false idol, Batman. No lie! Oh! I gave them what they needed. Sometimes the truth isn't enough. Jackal pulls out a knife, howls. Oh! Mm -hmm. The knife is a rotating dildo. Cut! Gloria! Gloria! End flashback knife scene. At first we got on well, then she tried to bring a feminist angle to the scene. I have nothing against feminism. Flashback, licking out scene. Gordon and Matt are watching the licking out scene in Watchmen. Gordon with headphones and salmon snacks. Simone removes the hair. Just a bit of nature. Looks too old. Do it about this long on the face. Cut. What's that on your titty? Sharpie. Yes, what does it say? A link to the video by Helga Schneider, <laughs> where he buys a lucky bag for men. <laughs> From Dr. Herrlich's practice? I know it. <coughs> Are you stupid? 
Thought it'd be a bit of titty-tainment. Well, rub it off, Squiddy. Simone! Why? We don't want funny titties. We want heaving, aseptic, revolutionary titties. What's so revolutionary about heaving titties? This is a German film. <laughs> Eichinger had Gudrun Elton's titties. The national television had Beta's titties. Have a think about the tradition you're a part of. The girl needs firm, white breasts. I think that's shit. I think it's lovely. Do you think it's lovely? No. Terrible. A patriarchal act of oppression. Pipe down! You could have stuff written on your titties. You could also have hired a woman over 40. We could have with black hair or step by blanker or a penguin to lick his cock. But we <coughs> want to make money. We're not gender swapping here. You're beautiful. He's a virile sex gorilla. End of story. Now lie down and get Helga Schneider off your titties. If she does that again, I'll send her packing. Man. Can you give me softer lighting on a no man's land and bring the 650 up a bit? A bit higher? Can we clean that up a bit again? Simone! End flashback, licking out scene. Gloria tried out different empowerment strategies. I understand her approach, but not during my scene. Her choice of method wasn't exactly mellow. Rather rustic humor. Flashback, love scene. Shut your trap, I'll reduce your fee. My dad pays for the catering. You always take two apple fritters. Since May, I've been on low carbs and Krav Maga for my biceps, and she eats like a horse. It's not fair. She's sweating all over my costume. That's not sweat. It is, it's warm and wet. Gloria! And flashback, love scene. <laughs> she called it pissing on the patriarchy. <laughs> Honestly, I despise the mainstream, but when Gordon visited me in Malmo, we made a deal. It was that simple. Race, class. I'll shoot your crap, but for tons of money. What? What? No! Yes, flashback Malmo. We're not showing that. Because... Yes, we are, how it really was. Flashback restaurant Malmo. In this film, there'll be a shagging like there's no tomorrow. Shaman style shagging, shagging for female power. The jackal doesn't actually mount her. He bows down as he licks. I'm in. The script was irredeemably shit. I only met Gordon because I was broke and hoping she'd buy me a mango daiquiri. But to persuade me, she'd actually learn a Lori Penny blurb by heart. If a woman like Gordon is reading neo-feminist books, then she's desperate. Desperation means room for negotiation. Under one condition. You want me to get naked. Yes. Titties. Yes. With or without nipples. With? 150,000. Is that a joke? 160,000. Pussy? Another 150,000. With licking? With licking, 200,000. Will you do it without? Without the vaginal prosthesis? Yes. Without for another 500. Deal. <laughs> And flashback restaurant Malmo, back to showdown. You're earning 410,000 euros more than us? So in total you're earning 410,150? Yes. To play the fuck buddy? That's right. Why are you throwing tampons at my head? Because I don't need the money anymore. How can you not need money anymore? After pink is a moist color, I got offered fuck bunny rolls in Germany. The girl is not a fuck bunny. She is a strong, sophisticated woman who compensates for her childhood traumas with bisexual escapism. That is totally 2017. I can name you 20 German films with strong, sophisticated women who compensate for traumas with bisexual escapism. And Thea, Gordon, and Thea. Gordon swallows something and, up. 
And Thea. Gordon swallow something. And Thea. Theater. Thanks. <laughs> Plates. That's irrelevant. I'm approaching 30. The parts I'm cast in are changing from strong woman who compensates for her childhood traumas with bisexual escapism to police inspector struggling to reconcile child and career. That's great. So I've written a script. Oh, please. Shut it, Jackie! A political rom-com with me in the lead role. An autistic politician falls in love with a rockabilly <clears throat> musician. They found a left-wing party, left wing party, and smash the system with Fender guitars. I had support from the German film board. What? But the ARD wanted to move the action to the Nazi period. The lead role was gonna go to Nina Haas rather than me, and the band to be replaced with Max Robb and his palace orchestra because of its educational mandate. So I renamed the project Hillbilly Vendelenden <laughs> and submitted it to Sweden. Why in Sweden? Really, Jackal? Really? Yes. Scene 15, Sweden, song. Gloria starts singing, Melody of Petula Clark's downtown. Gloria as the lead, the rest is the chorus. If Germany film industry has given you a hangover, then you should go to Sweden. <laughs> there they have cinemas that reveal whether their films pass the Betchel test. The Betchel test. They do it voluntarily, I swear no one forces them. 50% of all films are directed by women in Sweden. <laughs> Manuela Schweizig. <laughs> Nowhere else in the world do so many women work in superior underwear. No, positions. Yet the first rate is higher than in Germany and other EU nations. Maybe this isn't only due to the fact that Swedes fuck more often, but also to politics. No tax benefits for married couples in Sweden. Fathers take parental leave and no one looks at them funny. Here we call it the gender craze. Oh, Germany, don't be a silly sod. Do you think your trashy TV helps us? 30% of speaking women parts. 70% more men. I want to quit. The Swedes, they have Aki Karismaki and Mads Michelson, and who the hell do we have? Okay? They're not Swedes. But they're Scandinavian. Yes. Borgen. How great is Borgen? Now that's a female role. You can clap if you like. Then they saw pink is a moist color. I thought it was brilliant. But fuck bunnies don't correspond to Swedish cultural identity. They knew that 40% of German female characters have to show Blanka Brosten. <laughs> that is a structural <laughs> guideline in filmmaking. Even so, stripping off is a symbol of the German cultural environment, which manifests women's position in society as an object 
Money from Swedish project funding can only go to artists who commit to the values of Swedish society. Super sad. <laughs> we'll take it again from the top. Showdown, no tampons, no lines. What? Scene 16, showdown two. Mahatma. And we go back to start. Quiet, please, we're filming. Sound. Rolling. Camera. Set. Marker. And action. Whatever it is, it's nuclear. How long until it explodes? 35 seconds. Did you hear that? He's coming. Get the president on the phone. Where's the detonator? Tell me where it is. Oh! Hit him! Jackal hits, Mads flinches. Cut! Don't flinch, I didn't, okay? I didn't flinch. That, that was the back swing. Then comes the Chuck Norris roundhouse punch. Again! So I made a few feminist interventions, but Mads, if a film is a gearbox, then I was a small grain of Caribbean sand, and Mads was more of a boulder from the Elbow Sandstone Mountains. What's the problem? He shouldn't take such a big swing with his fist. It's a fight <laughs> scene. Gordon remained diplomatic for the first 30 takes. Masculinity, this fight is his initiation. I've said it a thousand times. The important element in the construction of masculinity is- Not being effeminate. Not being effeminate. Why? Because it's shitty being a woman. Punch, counterattack, don't flinch again. Again. Where's the detonator? Tell me. Boom. <laughs> Myself, the worst case scenario. And? It doesn't hurt. Are you bawling now? No. Do you need an ibuprofen? Yes. <laughs> Has anyone got an ibuprofen? Mads needs it. Can we do it without the hitting? Oh, how? Um, with talking? Do I get some lines? No! <laughs> I, I could hit the jackal. How? Like that. Kicks Jackal in the stomach. That didn't hurt. <laughs> <sighs> Gordon consoles the Jackal erotically. What is that supposed to tell us? His paw's getting too close. Even she's not afraid. Even she? He didn't give her a bruise during biceps training. <laughs> you gave him a bruise? <laughs> He gave him a blue. Because he's a wily scavenger. And you're a helium cowboy. He's discriminating against me. <laughs> Can he talk about discrimination? Come to terms with your genital primacy now. Shut, Shut up. up. This all feels pretty uncool, if I'm honest. Take your 410,150 euros and stick it up your ass. Ouch. I'm sleeping in a caravan. If your dad earns money with my titties, that's okay. But it's not if I do it. He didn't mean it like that. I'm leaving now. Leave the set. What? I don't have the feeling that this is a safe space for me. That's not all. If she's allowed to leave, I'll go on strike <laughs> until there's gender equity in the pet. Jackal wants to leave also. Wait a minute. We're shooting the show now. You're all staying here. The whole set smells of rotten salmon. I'm doing my best. We all are, trust me. You can't all just leave. I'll kill myself if you go. I really fought for this project. We know. I just want you to know that. I fought. I can't go back to where want to go back. Where do you come from? I come from the thief. <laughs> <laughs> from the theater. <laughs> Scene 17. Theater. Forgive me. Don't touch us. We had no choice. You always have a choice. 
everything suddenly made sense. <laughs> For me, the film industry is new territory, but we might have noticed earlier that Gordon has a, a, a different background. No offense. Flashback catering. Gordon sees the catering for the first time. Does Mahatma have all that? Where's the kitty? It's the catering. It's free. She fills her pockets in mouth of salmon rolls. <laughs> and flashback catering. We had to stop filming twice because Gordon had eaten too many salmon rolls. <laughs> and the set always smelled like rotten fish because she was secretly stashing away the rolls in her excitement and then she'd forgotten where she put them. The, the excitement was more for show. Her style of directing had a theatricality to it. Flashback, licking out scene, Gordon and Mads observing the licking out scene in Watchmen. Gordon with salmon roll. Gordon angry with salmon in her mouth, screaming to the top of her lungs. Come on, clearer, bring it, you cunt. What, what? No, 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 not what, act. Speak up, that's provincial shit. These are monolithic lines. You should get them, you cunt. I can't understand a word. Gordon? <laughs> yes, Mahatma? You have to put on the headphones, then you'll hear. And action. Remove the hair. It's just for the nature. It looks too old. And flashback, looking out, see. None of us has experienced it, but there are enough eyewitness reports. And the Arte retrospective, and it just leaves you speechless. Back to showdown. Why didn't you do anything? Things were different then. Ensembles <coughs> weren't allowed to sleep. The actors were allowed to sleep. Every member got eight free days per season when they didn't have to be reachable. Leg shackles? They're a myth. Anyone wanting to leave the city had to put it in an application. Then permission was granted or it wasn't. What did the actors earn? Everybody's crying. Theaters are public property. Were we supposed to use, sue the city? Today we talk about dignity, but dignity doesn't pay the rent. You could have all gone on strike. There was no all. There was me and the 200 parasites who'd have done the job for half my pay. Have you ever had any regrets? Of course. It was bigoted. On stage, we brought down capitalism. But we were exploiting our own people. Now you're in film because... Because of the money? I did theater for 13 years. Now I want to be paid for my work. I want a trailer, someone who drives me to the set, and to feel a bit pampered for once in my life. I'm just a girl who loves Batman stories. Scene 18, academization. OK, folks. <clears throat> the Batman Rises is a fucking idiotic, stereotypical reproduction circus. We agree on that, don't we? No. Yes. <laughs> Which of us is happy with their role? Me? None of us. Obviously, the broadcasters are putting on some kind of educational program. The goodies are white, and the baddies are hairy, and the women are blonde, slim, and under 40. So why don't we start up a re-education program? Who actually believes in this simplified dichotomy of good and evil? What? <laughs> Darth Vader, Luke Skywalker. Who watches that shit? The scripts are lousy. We're making art. We need more ambiguity. I thought Star Wars was good. Shut sure. up. <laughs> I think we should give the girl a name. Simone. Then we'll play a round of check your privilege. Who has the lead role in the most lines of this film as if it's their birthright? Please raise your hand. The white heterosexual cis man. I've been wanting to say that the whole time. Who thinks I should play the lead role from now on? With life! Are you crazy? <laughs> Your quota of words has been used up, sports fan. Let's make something performative with nice images. Jackal, take your biography and act it out. Look intimately into the camera and say, I've lived through this and that, and this is how I've fared with this and, and that. What? 
That's marginalized knowledge. I'm interested in perspective. Why do you eat baby zebras? You're biographizing me? She biographized you. I'm making your story visible. I want to play the Batman. This film doesn't gain in diversity if you deny your cultural identity. I come from Nina Saxonia. Clearly. Are you a woman? Uh, Are you a woman? No. Then why do you talk like a woman? That's cultural appropriation. I want him to whisper. Are we now <laughs> fighting our fight on the back of whispering people? <laughs> to, to a certain extent, the discussion was really fascinating. We live in times of erotic abundance. Their breasts have lost their shock value. But I want to show my tits. Let her show her titties. She wants my tits to be firm and aseptic. You don't want them at all. The devil knows why, but they're mine. And I demand prerogative of interpretation at last. Then at times there are too many Latin words in a sentence for me. You're Vaginalizing yourself? I am not vaginalizing myself. In Stockholm Body Fever, there were tons of foreign words, too, for muscles. And my dad said it was important to learn them because some muscles do have a name. <laughs> muscles that don't have a name aren't considered when working out, and that's shit for the muscles, but also for the whole body. A performance entitled Menstruation Matters is not vaginalization. You can vaginalize yourself. You don't have to. Marina Abramovich was hanging off her labia in the MoMA already 40 years ago. And still, she earns 23% less than Neo Rock. That stupid asshole. What are you arguing about? I'm a woman. I'm not a jackal. And, and he she will, will never, never know, know how, how that feels. feels. Well, you'll never know how it feels to be the son of a producer. Check your privilege, <laughs> man. I won't act with I won't act with her either. The shoot is over. Scene 19, The Batman Rises. No! no. <laughs> Let's finish filming now. I don't know what you've got against Star Wars, what you're arguing about, or who you want to make a re-education film for, but if those are your lines, then only rich, educated people will understand them. Sorry, I'm, I'm afraid of Jackie. I know it doesn't suit my role, but he is a jackal after all. I'm not a jackal. No one talking! You're all angry with me because I have the most lines. I don't have to get naked. But that wasn't my choice. There's a pressure to the role. Playing the lead role is also a pressure. And you cannot let the pressure show. But my dad said, if the film is a success, then I can visit him in Stockholm. Maybe. Now it's time for the big showdown. The Batman finds his way back to the majestic essence of his masculinity. I can do it because I'm the Batman. There's a Batman in me, as there is in all boys, as there is a girl in all girls, wanting to be licked out by the jackal. I didn't choose my privilege, but I am the producer's son, and you all signed a fucking contract in which it states that I'm the hero here, so you'll get saved and I'll knock your head off. That's why you're now going to get your unprivileged asses into position and shoot the show down with me in the lead role, or I'll sue you all until I don't hear another peep out of you, never mind the supplementary dental insurance or unemployment benefits. <laughs> Gordon! Yes? Do your fucking job! Everyone from the top, Mahatma! And we go from the top. Quiet, please, we're filming. Sound. Rolling. Camera. Set. Marker. And action. Where's the detonator? Tell me. Oh! Prepare us to hit and flashback showdown. Scene 20, emphasizing differences. Mads flinched again. In the showdown, I had to realize eventually a true hero is not a hyper-masculine gladiator whose pain can't be visible. A true hero has to be allowed to be human. The soft will always defeat the hard. His Batman <coughs> was the first of his kind, an androgynous icon of sensitivity. Joke. <laughs> we cast someone else for the showdown. Who's going to pay <coughs> to see a castrated owl flinching? In the end, 
It's the audience that decides. We are all human, but who would deny there are differences, differences between men and women, Mars and Venus, between races, star cultures? Whoever wants to move the masses has to emphasize these differences over and over again, incessantly emphasize the differences. If you guys want, you know, for the discussion. Well, and if you have to go, um, we'll have a discussion. And um, Sybil and Nora. Only if easy, only if easy. Well, that was, uh, that was quite a tour de force, and uh, you can only imagine how this will be, you know, this is fully staged and rehearsed, and uh, the jackal and mask and all of it. Uh, so, uh, again, fantastic, and Sybil, thank you for staging this in, uh, in as fast a time as the play is running, and Nora, thank you again for, for coming over and flying all the way from Berlin. So, um, tell us about the play, and where does it fit in your work? I wrote it. Yeah. <laughs> I wrote the play. And um, yes, it was a, a play I did for the Gorky studio. And um, we were searching a long time for the right um, theme or the right um, plot. And then uh, this idea occurred of making a making off. Because, and I think you guys don't know that, there was a movie, a German movie, about a girl and a wolf. And <laughs> it was um, a pretty, an art house movie with a strong erotic connotation. <laughs> <laughs> and um, it was for the Feuilleton, I don't know the English word, for the cultural critics in Germany. It was a huge hit. And it was a very young, very pretty actress um, acting out with a real wolf. <laughs> <laughs> and we were kind of um, I was sitting in Kreuzberg with a, with a bunch of actresses that I used to work with almost every time so this is like my working family and in the process of uh, pitching ideas to the Gorky uh, we found that um, subject or, uh, pretty interesting and then I told it to the uh, Gorky and I liked the idea, so I wrote this piece. And what did you discover writing the play? Writing, what did you discover writing and working with the ensemble on the play? What did you research and what came out of it? What surprised you? Um, well, we, I, uh, I researched about uh, the, this concept of toxic masculinity because we had um, this idea of the jackal <laughs> like being uh, the, the, the forgotten or now forsaken type of masculinity that's pushed aside but we needed so badly in our society back again. So that was a um, direction of the research. And then uh, we had a workshop with the actors and actresses. It was like uh, six, seven days, I guess, where we were just, I was just talking to them and listening to them because of course they had the expertise on German film business. And um, what we discovered, but I wouldn't call it the discovery, because I think the Gorky Ensemble, as well as I, pretty much knew it already, that there is a lot of sexism and racism in the German film industry. So yes, that's what we dealt with. 
Mm. And um, within your work, is it what, your first, one of your first plays, or how did you connect to the Gorky, and uh, what, what is your history with the theater? Um, I, it wasn't my first piece. It was like, I think, the fourth, maybe, or the fifth piece, but um, I knew Shermin Langhoff and Jens Hilje, who are director and co-director of the Gorky, from the Ballhaus Naunwinstraße, which is a very small theater in Berlin, Kreuzberg. Um, and they were working there before they got to the Gorky, and I worked there as an actress. And uh, there, for the f because I studied acting, and um, they gave me the opportunity for the first time to write and to direct there at the Ballhaus, and then I just we had a path, I think, for seven years now together in working and, yes, growing together. Yeah, so I think the play successfully deals with gender and with slogans, pop psychology and kind of uh, empty phrases. On the other hand, it's very serious, all the subjects. Also, it's a serious outcry, I think, in, in some way. Um, putting it out to the audience in Berlin or now here, what, what do you think of, of playwrights or uh, theater makers work does, what, what do you think, uh, what do you want to do with the play? What do you hope for? Why do you write for theater? <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, uh, um, the uh, first impulse if for me is most of the time being very angry about something. <laughs> so I'm really, I can really um, get angry on uh, situations or articles in the newspapers or stuff I see on TV. And that most of the time, like, makes me angry and then I talk to people <laughs> and I'm very angry and then I um, think, ah yeah, that might be something. That's an, a good engine for me to write about. And having studied acting in Germany and um, working in this um, scene, like theater, film, television scene, there's a lot of stuff that you, I think has to be changed. So of course this was an idea for this play to like at least um, start a thinking process about the status quo. Mm. Sibyl, how, how, how do you read the play? And having not been to Munich or worked, studied mu acting in Munich or being at the Gorky, so what, what sense do you make out of it? Um, well, right away, uh, as soon as I picked it up, I felt like the performance energy of it was really strong and clear, so I was not surprised when I found out that Nora is also an actor. And um, the energies of all the characters were so clear. Um, <laughs> it was no problem for me to immediately start thinking who, whose energy is this, who that I know here, um, and who I work with in, in my own company, who, who would, would it match with so beautifully? And um, so that was the, f that was the first thing. And um, I also recognized uh, not just anger, but wrath for me. <laughs> and um, and uh, I wore my Kali Ma t-shirt today because I was like <laughs> team spirit because that is also the energy of it. Like she's like, ah! <laughs> and it's, uh, uh, it's, it's exuberance, the exuberance of its wrath and its um, skewering of systems and of uh, things that are so deeply wrong. Uh, there, there is something so joyous and triumphant about that. And um, it also made me sad for us here in a way. Like I was, I was saying to these guys before, like, earlier that um, I remember when we would make satires like this, when times were better, like in the Clinton time. And uh, it wasn't that nothing was wrong, but we still, uh, we didn't, I'm not sure, I haven't quite worked it out yet, but I recognized something in this, like, having so much fun and taking the ball and running with it in this way that is so free and making all of the, the jokes that make us blush and the statements that make us blush and just let, and, and sort of the, gro the grotesqueness of uh, Gordon's character and of all the characters um, and sort of rolling in that in, in, in a way that is, 
so much fun and you can't, we're having fun and we can't help it even though all of these terrible things are being said and demonstrated. And it made me uh, sort of see how much trouble we're in in our mm. culture, in our country right now. Um, because those, those jokes, I w wouldn't write like that because it's almost too painful. It's, there's something so direct about it. And I also wondered if that, because the translation stuff was really interesting to me. Um, it was something we had a, a really good time with in rehearsing it. And um, I don't know German, but my experience of it having close friends and relationships with people who German is their language, I've noticed sometimes my feelings get hurt when they don't mean to hurt my feelings. And I think because it has something to do with the complexity of the German language and then the directness of the English language. So that when, and I'm not sure, I'm guessing this, it's something that I've observed a little bit, but that when it gets translated into English, something that wouldn't stab me um, as like insulting in German does in English because English is more direct. Um, so there was, there was an element of that in here and I thought, let's just go with it. And actually, I went back to another time in working with it. Um, and I'm looking at Eleanor because I've known Eleanor, I think the longest, like since we were much younger. So, um, but uh, that, was, that, was, that was a big part of my experience with it. How was it for the actors? How did that feel? Yeah. Oh, yes, hello. <laughs> um, I, I, you know, it was, I, it, it felt good. I think that the play is, uh, I mean, at least my part is a, it's, there's a female fantasy element that you, you see like the male fantasies played out on screen and, you know, a little less in theater, but still in theater, but that's the narrative that we're used to. And I've been on the end of, you know, acting on TV and, getting cast as like the rape victim, the, you know, crazy lady who get, has to <laughs> snort cocaine off of the toilet seat while somebody is trying to fuck her up the ass. Like it's, it's <laughs> the auditions that I have gone on have been very much like, it's all about that, you know? And it's like after a while, I think, <clears throat> then I hit a certain age and I got a part in a movie and the part was called middle-aged woman <laughs> and it was on my trailer like it <laughs> said middle-aged woman and so <laughs> i think that you know coming from that world and knowing what is expected of women in you know of course there are there's a lot of great tv now and there are a lot of great roles but it's hard to get those roles and you have to do the other stuff too if you're not like an a-lister so reading you know her play and and like it's it's kind of a female fantasy that you go on to a set and disrupt in a way like you I would never do it but I see where that thought came from so for me it was fun it, the whole thing was just a lot of fun kind of a relief <laughs> um it's interesting because like I love Sybil dearly, so I I'm, will say yes, Sybil, sure, whatever you need, right? And so <laughs> I, then I read the script and I was like, oh, wow. Um, <laughs> but I, I think to add on to what Eleanor just said, like, it's so true. I remember specifically um, um, having a conversation with, uh, found with one of my uncles actually when I told him I was coming back to New York to live and I went to grad school and blah, blah, blah. He was like, look, Oshana, you're gonna have to be your own businesswoman because you're not gonna get the roles. I mean, and it was a hard whoa, but it was honest and he was telling me out of love. You know, like I can name how many, just recently, I think actually for, for black actresses, this is a, where it's a better time than it has been. Because um, we can name, you know, the Lapitas and the Shonda Rhimes, the writers and the actresses, and and they're still even just even though we have those few, it's still a handful. It's still one hand. Um, 
And so this idea of being the, the no-name female actor uh, on, in the script or in the movie, it's like how many even movies can you think of where it's a male, uh, a male lead and then who's the female and who, like she's there but she's the, the middle-aged lady or the pretty blonde. Or she's you know? only shown from the neck down on yes, the poster. Yes, exactly. Or, you know, she's the one that you see getting up out the bed that's naked, right? So it was from that perspective also, I really enjoyed the script with the, with the short time that we've had it, just really looking at the commentary from the inside, but really not from the inside, from the outside looking in, but understanding because you're in that field. Um, that's what I really enjoyed ab um, about delving into this, this piece. It also dealt a little bit with the idea of film versus theater, like they couldn't even pronounce it, you know. Um, <laughs> is that, uh, and we all of course think, at least in Germany, theater is kind of a higher cultural level than it is here, but do you also feel it's, uh, it's changing, uh, the connotation, is it um, so much better to work in film, or is that just a joke in your... Uh, in your no, it's not a joke, it's... Um it's paid. I mean, and uh, this is like a strange thing to say because we had the discussion on, I think, Monday. Um, I think the German city theaters or state theaters, with they have the structure of an ensemble, so they have actors and actresses paid. They have contracts for two or three years or more, so I think that's something uh, in comparison to here, which is pretty good and secure, and uh, I think it's a good thing. <laughs> On the other hand, still, if you work in theater, and th so this whole <laughs> issue of Gordon coming from the theater <laughs> and um, wanting to make money is a pretty personal thing <laughs> <laughs> uh, for me as well, because still, if you work in theater, especially in, in city theaters that aren't uh, financiered, funded, funded, yeah. funded yeah. like with huge amounts of money, um, you really work your ass off and you are not, um, you know, you still, it's little. <laughs> and there are, in these structures as well, especially for the actors and actresses, it's really rude and really strict. And um, so that, whilst these five days that we've been sitting around together with the ensemble talking, this was just an issue that popped up all the time, again and again and again and again, so I just put it in the play because I think it's relevant as well, even though it's a little bit of introspection, which is not always necessary, but in this piece I thought it's okay to put it out there and to have the uh, chiefs of the theater see it, <laughs> come and see it. And of course it's a metaphorical, you know, the man, role of the man in the film or the role of a man in li real life, as you know, it's symbolic representation, you know, of bodies on stage and how the way you question it and uh, attack it and also able to laugh about it, but also say it's a pretty cynical view of it that is close to a reality. I think it really does what theater does. It makes us think who we are, where we come from, and, uh, and try to give meaning to our times and the things have to change and that they are changing. Um, how do you, it feels, as Sybil said, an actor's play. Um, so do, do, how do you, did you write it also in the gorky way? It was an ensemble, where you rehearse, do you tape it, do you write it, or is it all on a piece of paper and you imagine it? No, I'd, um, I, uh, it starts out most of the times with a theme, so I, have, uh, I know which theme or subject I want to write about, and then I go into a research phase where I just read and uh, watch stuff and go to the library. So I put it all in here, and then I have a concept. So I know I'll have these characters, and this might happen. It's a very rough, very rough concept. And at that point, um, most of the times the theaters tell me, or I know which will m be my ensemble who will b act in this play. And then I go to the theater with the concept, and it depends on the structure. Sometimes we have one rehearsal, one day. For the making of it was a huge amount, amount of time, it was like seven days, where we just sit together and I start to get them into the boat, and we improvise a little and we gather material, and then I go back home and then the writing starts. So then it's like two months, hopefully, most of the time. I would like more. Where I just sit and write and then we start rehearsals with the play. It's there. 
So it's not a classical uh, work in progress thing. The day the rehearsals start, we have a play. That's good. We are a little bit close to time because 6.30, the next uh, 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 play starts. I, I had so many more questions, actually, but uh, maybe we uh, have a bit the light up. And um, are there some comments or thoughts or um, something to, um, to say? Since Laura traveled all the way from Berlin. Yeah. It's okay. <laughs> yeah. I take the, take the mic. I found it so refreshing that the female acting out was done in a very different way than the male acting out. The bloody tampon was just a brilliant moment. Um, and it's just something that only a female, I think, could write. Um, and so that's also empowering um, for us. And, and also just the sensitivity with which the male responded to that, the kind of revulsion, but also a kind of primal emotional response because it's outside the repertoire. So I really appreciated that you explored um, behavior that's just not sanctioned, that's just never seen. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, there's a lot of, of style in this play, for want of a better word. And I'm curious about just very heightened language. It kind of reminds me of some of those uh, 1930s screwball comedies like 20th Century or something where, you know, just this outrageous director. But uh, does the style play differently when you hear it in English uh, and in the translation than it was when, when it was done in Berlin? Mm. <clears throat> Actually, not. Mm. I think the the ground structure of it, like this, is a the satire or this comedy works a lot about the, with the rhythm. So it, this is something I think that's the same here. Yeah, um, the energy yeah. felt the same. We never struggled with what is the energy or what is it about or anything like that the whole time. Yeah. So uh, uh, that the style thing didn't change for me. What uh, came to my mind when I heard it here is how many references I have to the American market. <laughs> I really didn't think about that while writing it because I didn't assume it would uh, ever be read out here. But that was something that popped up to me that it has another relevance here because in Germany I was guessing like some of them might get the Game of Thrones thing or something, but I'm sure here it's a, a huge thing. But no, I think the structure is, it works in both languages. Anything else? I think um, it's a, as we said, it's a comedy. Also, people are laughing. You're very pretty fast, and um, so um, is you. Do, is are you a com comedic? Are you the comedy writer, the Gorky, or is that your uh, your tradition, or does it happen to be uh, a comedy? Yeah, it happens to be. No, I mean I am. Um, all of the subjects I deal with, they all have the potential to be uh, staged as a drama or written as a drama uh, as well, but I, I, I would, it would be very um, pedagogish mm. or pedagogical, mm. pedagogical, pedagogical. Uh, if I would try to do that, this uh, humorous thing is the thing that comes to me intuitively. No, and I think it, it would be, at least I think, work in the American market where we are so fed up with all the uh, action hero movies, you know, the interesting movies that disappear and mm -hmm. television took over with the long form series of narrative to tell complex stories. And, um, and this is an attempt in a way to revitalize it. But uh, Sybil, would you stage this or do you think your company, would people come in New York? What, what, what do you think? Is that is it asking too much of the I audience? The ac academic discourses or funny dialogues that really go way over anything you would see on a... I feel really curious about it. And, um, mm. too? And, I, and I was very, like, everything, like, we really only read it through one time. We didn't have a lot of time. We, you know, we, we made it through, but it was, you know, and stopping and starting. So um, I was still learning as I was watching, you know, what it is. So I feel very curious about it, and I would love a couple of months to, yeah, to really, really get into it. I think um, it's my kind of 
uh, script, yeah. the, the, the pace of it and the timing and how everything um, changes but also develops within, within these changes and the um, sliding backwards and forwards in time and uh, with, with different um, configurations and then we'll go back and revisit that. I'm gonna tell my version. All right, we'll go back and tell this version now. Um, there's so much to play with in it. Um, and that thing that I said about doing a satire, like a really harsh satire, it's, I don't see it happening so much these days. I think, like I said, because of where we, it's just not where we are, but it sure was fun to mess around with it. It should be, could be a great uh, infusion of the idea that you do filmic methods, you know, like uh, the cuts and backwards, mm -hmm. forwards, uh, you know, flashbacks and, mm -hmm. uh, and, and all of it. But maybe the Gorky, we can convince them with somebody else, say, give us 50, 60,000, we stage all six, <laughs> we would stage all six plays at the, at the, at the, uh, at the Arendelle. This is our offer, you know, if anybody helps us and you do it out of your travel budget or something, or, or a film role. But um, what are you working on now? What's coming up? Uh, right now I'm writing... Uh, In Munich, I know we left yes. Berlin, right? You yeah, went I back. left Berlin, yes. I went back to Munich. Um, I'm uh, writing, or I did write my first TV episode mm -hmm. for a TV series. It was animals and... Uh, <laughs> I would have loved strong, to. Strong man or... <laughs> no, it about? Um, it's, about, it's about grief. <laughs> What a funny <laughs> issue! No, it's about grief. It's not a satire. So it's I was I'm a, a staff writer. So I, this is not my series. There are like showrunners, and they just cast me into the staff. And uh, this is the first time I could do that. And um, it was really uh, like uh, school for me for the first time. So I'm I will um, proceed in that direction, but in like one year, I'll do another play for the Gorky, and then I'll do a play for Theater in Munich, so it's going on. Fantastic, well all the best, and thank you for coming, thank you for staying, it was a longer play, but it was I think a great treat, and uh, so much energy in it, and really, and also a very serious, very, very serious subject, and the way you treated it, and tried to communicate it, uh, also, in telephone intelligent audience and believing in it is it is remarkable so thank you and in 20 minutes 22 minutes we have the next the five weeks to play which is also a great one so thank you for coming and uh, great applause <laughs>